It's draft week here on the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high-quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP today to learn more about our history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith with Titans Radio's draft duo, Coach Dave McGinnis and Rhett Bryan, and we are ready to dive in to draft week, leading it off with the linebackers. Do you call these the off-ball linebackers? Off-ball linebackers. That's All right. Rhett Bryan, take us through the top five that you and Coach Mack have come up with of off-ball linebackers. At number five, Cedric Gray, North Carolina. At number four, Jeremiah Trotter, Jr., Clemson. At number three, Junior Colson, Michigan. At number two, Peyton Wilson, North Carolina State. And at number one, Edgerin Cooper, Texas A&M. I was very interested to see why you went number one with Cooper from Texas A&M, Coach. Athlete. He's a he's a run and hit guy. He's an he's an off the ball. He's a space linebacker. He's a he's a he's a run and hit guy. And and to me, you know, 6'2", 230, 4, 5, 1, 40, 34 and a half vertical. But he just he's sudden on the field. He's very very sudden. Now he's got to clean up his eyes, and he's also got to clean up. I mean, he'll he'll jump a rabbit quick, and and so th- he's going to have to learn that. He's going to have to he's going to have to clean up his K and D, which is key and diagnose. But I just like the athleticism. That's why I have him there. All right, Junior Colson from from the Franklin area. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And Junior Colson to me is the quintessential middle linebacker okay quintessential middle linebacker 6'2", 238 pounds 458 in the 40 he had a he had a he had a, a, a right hand at his pro day but I like this player he's a very aware player he's a very alert all of these linebackers let me just say this having coached linebackers for a few years in the National Football League every one of them that comes into this league the first thing you've got to do is put them on a one-man sled and teach them how to shoot their hands and shock and shed and get off a block because they're so used because of the space game as just running running behind blocks you know trying to track things down you you I mean I learned this from Mike Singletary we used to have a buckboard at the Bears when I first got there with sand in the bottom okay so what is that now it's a stationary board with a pad on it and then sand a sand pit where your feet would be okay long horizontal board it was set up right outside the 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 linebackers workout spot up there in Lake Forest. And every day when I got there, you know, Mike Singletary was really big on pre-practice drills. So, you know, I would ask Mike Singletary, which I should have, what do you do? What do you like? Here's kind of what I like to get. I said, Coach, we've got to do the buckboard every day because your hands, you got to be able to shoot your hands, get off blocks, shoot your hands, get off blocks. And then you put the sand pit in there to make it a little bit harder as far as the movement stuff. Shock, shed, shock, shed. Uh, I think if you'll ask Keith Bullock, you ask David Thornton, any of the linebackers I coached here, I mean, they knew immediately when we go to the practice field, when we go to individual, first thing we're going to do is the one-man sled, shock, shed, pull, shed it. Because that's so important. And most linebackers coming out of the collegiate game need to learn how to use their hands in the National Football League because offensive linemen are so much more athletic than than the majority of linemen they play against that they get swallowed really quick once you go up into them with your shoulder. So, anyway. Coach, uh, Mac mentioned the buckboard. Rhett, did you know what that was? Not until right now. Thank you. I appreciate that. You made me feel so much better. Yeah, yeah. But you know who Peyton Wilson is from North Carolina State. Absolutely. Uh, and if it weren't for the medical stuff on him, because he had a shoulder, he's had a knee, he's had all kinds of stuff, he might be the the guy in this position at the top. And super athletic guy, 6'3", 233, 443 in the 40, 34 and a half inch vertical leap. Uh, a good tackler, good, good tackler, 400 tackles in college, 48 tackles for loss, 15 quarterback sacks, um, and just, you know, he can move. He can move around. He's just got the medical things. And, and if he checks out, somebody's going to take him. And it would be a night two kind of thing. There won't be any linebackers taken in, in the first round. Uh, these are all going to be started with a run pretty early on in round two. Yeah, and, and, and Peyton Wilson, he, he is he is the quintessential stack backer, especially on the wheel side, on the weak side. 
because when you watch tape on him, I mean, he can chase them down. I mean, I mean, I mean he's like a dog on a rabbit. I mean, he can, he can chase them down and run them down quick from the back end. I mean, he really can. He is fast, fast, fast. He's got long arms. He needs to use how to learn those better. But he does have a pretty extensive injury history, which will, which will, which will factor a lot in. But if you just watch him, this was his, this was a good year for him. But he shows up on tape running past people to get to the ball carrier, especially in chase mode. Injury history with a guy who takes contact on every play. Not great. Not great. Like we talked last week about Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback from Washington, and his injury history at Indiana. I mean, it's concerning, but the quarterback doesn't get pummeled on every play. He isn't running into a 240, 260, 320-pound man on every play. A linebacker in the NFL is. Yeah, and, and it, it reminds me, his situation reminds me a whole lot. Uh, the linebacker you know, from Boise that just retired from Dallas, Van Der Esch, it's so similar because Van Der Esch had injury issues, you know, with the neck, with the shoulders coming right. out. Dallas took a chance on him. He had some really good years, mm-hmm. but he was always in and out. In and, and finally, it caught up to him. But Peyton Wilson, athletically, is what you want in space. Dave McGinnis, coach linebackers in the NFL. So outside of the top five, who is your favorite of the 2024 linebacker class? Trevin Wallace from Kentucky. Really? I like this guy. I, I really do. 6'1", 237, 451, 37 and a half inch vertical, broad jump of 10'7". I mean, he just gets it. He's a hunt and seek guy. You can tell. I mean, he, he understands how to play behind the line of scrimmage. He's really good at finding creases. He's really – now, he does one of the better jobs of being able to disengage and go. I, I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. I think he'll be – he should be He should be probably in the third round, and uh, you're going to get a good football player in this guy. Mac, you had another favorite too, and I'll give you the pronunciation here, from uh, Washington, Edifuan Ulofosio. Of course. Red is, Red is so good at these. I mean, that's. I mean, it takes two to do this. It does. And Red's the best. This is a fourth or fifth round guy. You know, he reminds me of this is Stephen Tullick. Okay. This is this is Tully. I mean, when I was here, Jim Schwartz and I banged on the table uh, on the, the the second night for going into the third day, the fourth uh, the fourth the fourth round to get Stephen Tullick because he was a smaller linebacker at NC State. But when you put on that Meineke Car Care Bowl, he made every tackle. Every tackle. And so, I mean, and this guy, you know, size-wise, 6004, 236, 456, probably a little faster than what, what, what Tully was, but a 39-and-a-half-inch vertical jump, 10-8 broad jump, uh, bench press 21 pounds. He has got a great – and plus, just what's in him. He was a walk-on initially, okay, and, and, and he called the defense there. His, his K and D, you can just tell the way he plays and what goes on and some of the people that I've listened to talk about him that – get the info from the school that I don't get because that's not what I do now. He's he's all in all the time. I really like this guy. All right, Rhett, let's turn to sleepers at the linebacker spot. Give me one that jumps out to you. Katan Oladapo from Oregon State, a guy that we saw at the Senior Bowl in Mobile. He was a preferred walk-on at Oregon State and came in and played safety. He's going to be able to put some – weight on his frame because he's a pretty big long player 6'2 216 and a lot of people have him including coach Mack projecting at a linebacker position kind of like Keith Bullock kind of deal right um, but you're talking about 6'2 216 uh, wing about 77 ran a 4'5 8 uh, in the 40 and at safety 248 tackles 15 and a half for loss six and a half uh, quarterback sacks so he's around the ball um He's he's just somebody that's interesting to me as, as a as a day three kind of guy. I think the closer that he gets to the ball, the higher his game would elevate. I, I agree with. Now, that. why do you say that? Well, because he's just he's a tall guy. He doesn't have oily hips, but he's got great he's got great jump, and he's got good transition, and he's a physical guy. But in the in the back end, you've got to be able to 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 have some flexibility in those hips, and I don't think he quite has that space ability. Interesting. All right, your sleeper, Coach Mack. Marist Luafau. Luafau, Notre Dame, right? From Notre Dame, 6'2", 234, uh, 464 guy. This guy just plays the game like a middle linebacker should play the game. I mean, I don't think – I think he will probably be 
What do you think, Rhett? Fourth round, maybe. Yeah, he'll be he'll be day three. Yeah, fourth fourth round guy, but I just like him. And plus, look, he played at Notre Dame. Notre Dame plays really good football, and he's got some size to him. He's six two two thirty four. Most of these linebackers we're talking about, other than Edred Cooper and other than than uh, Junior Colson, are you know six foot two twenty eight, six one two thirty four. This guy is is six two two thirty four. Has played on the big stage before. Uh, I think somebody's going to take him about the fourth or fifth round. And Mike, length, almost an eighty inch wing on this guy. Yeah. And go watch the film. You'll see his number pop up in frame frequently. All right, let's move to interior defensive lineman now. Rhett Bryan will give us he and Coach Max top five overall. And at number five, Chris Jenkins Jr., Michigan. Number four, Tavondre Sweat, Texas. Number three, Braden Fisk, Florida State University. Number two, Jerzan Johnny Newton, Illinois. And number one, Byron Murphy II, Texas. Murphy and Newton are similar builds. Are they similar type players? Murphy is a little more explosive. And Murphy's got a great ability, Mike, uh, to, to, to genuflect against double teams. And when I say that, he has got a really great ability to get in that crack in between double teams, stick a leg on the ground, and then corkscrew himself out of it because he's really quick. He's got, he's got good upper, upper body strength. He had a 33-inch vertical jump, and he benched 28 times at, at two and a quarter. Uh, I, I like his explosiveness. Uh, you know, he's a 4'8", 7'40 guy, so it's not a huge chase guy, but effort. And then he's, he's violent at the line of scrimmage with his hands. To me, uh, Johnny Newton or Jerzon Newton is a, is a – I mean, he's, he's got a Jones fracture and his broken foot. He had surgery in January, so he hasn't done anything in the offseason. But his tape is pretty impressive to watch. And at 6'2", 304, he's a little bigger. A little bigger. A little bigger than what, than what Murphy is. I think those two guys will be 1-2 in the top slots, depending on how defensive coordinators look at their people. And you liked Fisk a lot, Rhett at the Senior Bowl. First of all, I like the player, but we came to like the person in the interview that we had that was on the OTP. You're talking about a guy that was a Western Michigan guy, then transferred, went to Florida State, and was a big part of their success in 2023. When you're talking about looking at the film, you go back, I still I look at that ACC championship game against Louisville. He and Jared Verse absolutely tore it up. He had, I don't know, three and a half quarterback sacks, nine and a half tackles. And uh, tested really well at 200 and I think 92 pounds and ran a 472 40. So, yeah, go make somebody a nice player. Sweat from Texas. 366 is what he weighs. Yeah. Yeah. A, 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 a svelte 366. <laughs> he plays a shade. He plays a shade, which is, I mean, he won't, he won't be a three technique. And the other thing about, about Sweat, look, there's not this, these kind of humans walking the earth. That, that can move. I mean, he's 5'2", 740, which is pretty amazing. It's amazing. Amazing at that. Now, 26-inch vertical jump to get 366 <laughs> off the ground, 26 and a half inches, and 8'2". Now, he's got some hickeys on him, but I, I think he's a two-down player. Like what? Well, he's a two-down player. You're okay. not going to put him in on third down to rush the passer. Okay. Now, what he will do, he will make it really hard to get any yardage between in that center guard triangle on first and second down. Because the guy is massive. I mean, he's 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 like he's like a coke machine the way he's built. I mean, he's just square and tall. Uh, now, we know he had the hickey, you know, right before the draft, which isn't great. No. Which will which will people are going to ask him on his visits about that, and they're going to you know they're going to they're going to that's going to cause them to dig even more on the maturity, the decision making, those types of things. But physically, as a player, if you're looking for somebody, especially in an odd defense, in a three-four defense to play over the center, is somebody going to play a true nose, or if somebody's going to slide between the center and the guard to that tight end side to play to play a shade, you know, either side of the either side of the center, and and command double teams for the center guard triangle. I mean, there's nobody bigger in this draft, and. Big dudes have a chance. I mean, we've seen some massive dudes play just two downs, you know, in this league and be a, an integral part of defenses. All right, let's get your favorites at the interior defensive line spot. Coach Mack, why don't you go first? Rook Ahoraho from Clemson. How did I do with that, Rhett? Very well. Thank you. 6'4", 290 pounds, uh, 
four eight nine in the forty. Uh, 34 inch arms, so he's got he's got levers on him. He's got levers on him. 32 inch vertical jump, 29 at two and a quarter. This is a really strong human being, really strong. Uh, 290 pounds. He he works. He constantly works. He's a worker in there. He's got pretty relentless energy going on. Uh, I like this guy. Red, are we staying in the ACC for your favorite? We are, and his name is Dwayne Carter from Duke. And uh, you talking about a guy that. He played all along that defensive line for the Blue Devils. I think he was mostly a three technique um, as a D tackle in that, but played a lot of football. 52 games played, started every single game in the last three years, and you're talking about a dude off the field, uh, three-time captain, and was a member of the NCAA's Football Oversight Committee for two years. Um, oh, Jack Tatum award winner for his community activism, uh, top athlete in this. So a smart guy, smart football guy. I think he is someone that is a value pick for somebody in day three. All right. Your sleeper in the interior defensive line, Rhett. It's Christian Boyd from Northern Iowa. And Christian Boyd is, if you, if you see him, you're going to see a lot of people say, well, why in the world? wasn't he invited to the NFL combine? He's one of those that was a lot. You'll see a lot of people say was um, a snub, if you will. Uh, six, two and change, 329 pounds, um, 77 wing. Uh, just a guy that I think is someone that can help someone in uh, the third day of this draft and, and maybe even earlier. Um, Mac, you looked at him. I mean, I, I think Christian Boyd is somebody that, that is a help. I really do. Well, the first thing is he, he, he 38 times with two and a quarter. So you've got 38? Yes. Yeah. You've got massive upper body strength in you know, what you're looking at. And you look at 6'4", 317 pounds. You know, and so those kind of guys, and he's got enough movement in there that uh, I, I agree with Rhett. I mean, and people will, will – uh, defensive line coaches are going to be very involved – you know, when, when it gets down to this. I mean, I've just been in too many draft rooms. When the defensive line comes around, those guys are specialized. I mean, they they kind of, you know, look at somebody, well, this this guy may not check all the boxes, but he fits with what I do. But he's got enough to him that uh, I kind of I agree with Rhett. Who's your interior D-line sleeper, Coach? It's not a sleeper, but it's a guy I think is a little undervalued, is is, is Mike Hall, Jr. from Ohio State. Okay. I like him, 6'3", 290. Uh, ten, you know, his hands are 10. He's massive. He's got violent, violent hands. Four seven eight forty twenty five 25 times on two and a quarter. He's got an 81 and 2 eighths inch wingspan. So he's got length to him. He's just he's really a workman-like down defensive lineman, which you can't have enough of. Uh, he, he may go on the second day, and if he does, somebody's getting a value pick. How do you feel about day three depth in the interior defensive line in 2024? Falls off a little bit. Falls off. To me. Falls off. I'm going to give you a name here that nobody else is going to give you. Okay. And it's just because we're just, we just, I just like doing this. This guy's from Pitt State. You know what Pitt State, what their mascot is? The Gorillas. The Gorillas. God, I love you, Mike. Thanks, okay. Coach. Okay. Name, <laughs> thanks, Coach. My name is Dubin Okonkwo. Dubin Okonkwo. Now he played. He played. He played a shade, and 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 and, and then he played a three technique. And he's he just he. I just like watching him because he just he's just a ball of fire in there. Five eleven, two thirty. Okay, so that's he's been put in a trash masher. Okay, four two one, ten one broad jump, four four eight forty. Okay. What are you going to do with a 5'11"? Who knows? I would just love to have him in camp to, to, to run around. But would you play him at inside linebacker? Maybe. But he's not ever played stand-up before, has he? No, I could teach him. Oh. You just, you're just you just throwing out just a player you like, a I random do, defensive that's player. That's a random player. Because he's from Pittsburgh State. Yes. You and, wanted and me to say gorillas. I wanted you to say gorillas. <laughs> and then, plus, I like watching a guy 5'11", 230, that looked like he's been in a trash basher, as I said, but can run 4'4", 840. Trash basher. But, I mean, you can't line him up on an NFL defensive line, can oh, you? Boy. No, probably not. Okay. But now everybody knows his name. Well, Dubin Okonkwo. Dubin Okonkwo. So when he comes to your door selling insurance, you'll know who he is. But you don't think he's going to do that. You think he's got a chance to play for somebody. Probably don't, no. I just like bringing his name up. Well, that's really good. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I know you really didn't want that. But no, you, but you got fantastic. it. Fantastic.
The OT people got a gift. The OT, a gift for the OT people. <laughs> All right, so how about my – so I'm excited about the next group. I love to talk edge players. There we go. Rhett Bryant, you and Coach Mack have been breaking down the edge players, absolutely going through them, tearing through the data, watching the tape, talking to people, and you have picked your top five edge players in the 2024 NFL draft. Please. At number five, Darius Robinson, Missouri. At number four, Chop Robinson, Penn State. At number three, Leatu Latu, UCLA. Jared Verse is at number two from Florida State. And the top on the list, Dallas Turner, Alabama. Our Titans radio colleague, Ramon Foster, believes the Titans should select Dallas Turner at number seven. Why, in your opinion, does Ramon feel so strongly about Dallas Turner? Well, this is the best edge guy in, in the draft. He and Jared Verse are different, but they're both really top. They'll both be first-round picks, no doubt. To me, Dallas Turner would be the first one off the board. And if Ramon, when he has his team, uh, you know, he can go take his name off the top of the board and, and put it in there. 6'3", 247, 4'4", 640, 40-inch vertical jump, 10'7", broad, 83-inch wingspan. He's got the ability to skim the edge. Now, he's not – I wouldn't say he's elite Gumby as far as motorcycle lean, but he's got a he's, – he's close to being there. He can skim the edge. He's great. In, he, he can chase people down. He's got long levers. He can set the edge out there on the outside. And to me, when you watch Dallas Turner, there's times when you're watching him when you'd like a little more, but then there's times when you say, wow, you know, I can get and, – and, and he played a lot. He played a lot. So the athletic ability and, and more and more the edge players in this league have got to be exceptional space athletes. This guy is one. All right. Let me break you down here, Coach. When you say Gumby, I mean, we all remember Gumby and Pokey and <laughs> Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live. But when you're talking about, when you're talking about football <laughs> skills, what does Gumby mean as an edge rusher? Lower body flexibility. Okay. Flexible. And motorcycle lean is, is – You've watched those motorcycle races that they do on ice? Sure. Okay, when, when they lean the motorcycle yeah. around, around the turns and, and, and they put their knee on the, on the ice when they're leaning, that's what you have to do skimming the edge. If you skim the edge to do that, you've got to be able to – you know Jim Washburn, how he used to do the, the hoop drill here, mm -hmm. make him pick up the, the towels that he got integrated into the workouts at the combine. You've got to be able to turn the corner, but at the same time, then you have to be able to get your foot – your inside, your inside foot, your motorcycle lean foot, you've got to get it pointed back to the quarterback as quick as possible. If you don't have that lean ability, then good offensive tackles will just run you past the arc. They'll run you past the setup point. And so there are, there are guys that have the lower body flexibility. Javon Curse, you know, great, great example of it. You know, Burns just got paid. Great example of it. Guys that can skim. Dwight Freeney. Dwight Freeney. Guys that guys that Simeon Rice that right. I had that I had at, at Arizona guys that can lean and skim the edge without losing any speed can that skill to at least a certain extent be taught or improved you can you can teach the technique okay. a little bit but the flexibility that's God given so it can be refined a little bit. It can be refined with, with, with the technique and the get-off. The first thing is, is the get-off, you know, the, 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 what you do with your first step, hand placement, all of that stuff. And I've watched you know, Jim Washburn coach that. You can teach a lot of that technique to get off. But the God-given ability with the lower body flex, that's, that's what you're looking for. Leatu Latu from UCLA is and, – and I have watched this group a good bit because I, I like the pass rushers. Right. He, to me, is the heaviest dude. He's like 260-something pounds. 260. And when he hits the guy trying to block him, I mean, it's, it's, it's an impact. He does have some moves. He does have some ability. Is it just all about the medical with him? It is. Uh, because we, we've mentioned Leighton Van Der Esch, who just retired for the Dallas Cowboys, the neck injury with this. So uh, he's rolling along at University of Washington has a neck injury at a spring practice, and he's basically medically retired. He does not play a snap of football for two years. He has an assistant coach that goes from University of Washington, ends up landing at UCLA, and encourages him, after he's had this neck surgery, to get him back on, on course. 
And, of course, he does. He has a great year in 2023. Uh, accolades, uh, I think he was the Ted Hendricks Award winner yeah. for the best defensive lineman in FBS. And if it weren't for the medicals, he'd be maybe ahead of Dallas Turner and Jared Verse with this because he's a violent player. Oh, yeah. Well, the other thing is, too, he's he has got the most nuanced counter moves of any of these guys. I mean, he's a you know they're all different. Dallas Turner is an edge guy that can, that can move. Jared Verse is a speed to power guy. He's a power rusher. I mean, he's a he's a heavy. But Latu is so nuanced. You could see that at the Senior Bowl. He he's he's got counter moves, and and you know you've got to teach a lot of that coming into this league. He's got it already. He understands hand placement. He understands it, and he also understands countering. If somebody gets something stopped, he's got an immediate answer to it with a counter. So he's a very, very nuanced pass rusher. 112 pressures and 23 and a half sacks in the last two seasons for the Bruins for Latu. Yeah. I mean, the productivity, I mean, like Chop Robinson is a guy that you would be drafting on upside. A hundred percent. I mean, what do you have? Four sacks, four and a half sacks for Penn State? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have numbers at all. But he has traits. Traits. And he has great size. Latu has body and production underneath his belt. Production and, and consistent production. And we could see that at the senior bowl. Oh yeah. You watch it at the, you watch Well, he was causing some excedrin headaches. No, he was. <laughs> I mean, he's I mean, he's heavy in the rear end. He's bringing it in every he way. He looks the part, he, he acts I mean, the part, he plays the part. He's, he's nasty. He, but no. but the fact that he's that he's got combination moves. When you're doing one-on-ones, and, and, and really, I mean, one-on-ones are, are are a great example of being able to watch people compete, but it's it's, you know, one-on-ones for offensive linemen with nobody else in there is is a little bit unfair, but so what? And and the same thing with one on ones with linebackers trying to cover running backs, or I mean, they're, they're, you have to understand the the spectrum of what you're looking at. But this guy, people didn't want to go up against him in one on one because he would embarrass them with a the second move. And so I, I agree with you, Mike. But the the injury history, yeah, the neck, the uh. neck, the neck, and again, it goes back to the Van Der Esch thing that we talk about and. Talk about Peyton Turner. You you've got to really dig into that because you know this will be a first. He'll be a first round guy, right? But you've got to decide. You know, at what point in the first round are you ready to, to allocate assets? Well, he's being mocked like 12, 13, there 14. It is. Mm-hmm. But you wonder if he doesn't fall down into the twenties because when it comes time to turn in the card, are you going to say we love him, but we're going to take this guy instead? Or, or maybe the quarterbacks go higher. Maybe there's six quarterbacks in the top 15. A playoff team may end up with him in the early to mid-20s just because of circumstance. And so he doesn't have to be the number one guy coming right. in. Watch him go to the Ravens. Just watch that happen. And because oh. of the upside and not so much production with Chop Robinson, they could end up being drafted in the same window right. there in the 20s. I right. could totally see that. So here's the one that gets me in your list. And I love this. By the way, this is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Welcome, OT people. We're so glad. <laughs> We're so glad to have you. Darius Robinson from Missouri. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've got Turner, who's 247. Verus is roughly 250-ish. Latu's 260-ish. Chop Robinson's 250 to 260. Darius Robinson is 6'5", 286. Well, you know who he is. No, who is he? He's the guy that just, I don't want to break your heart again. You're going to hurt me with Danico Autry. Yes. That's who he is. That's who he is. Why did, okay, so he can for, play up and down the line. You're so gonna play. we're going to act like here on the OTP that we've never seen Danico. And I, you know, I still love Danico. But he doesn't exist. Who is Darius Robinson as a player in line with Danico Autry? 6'5", 285 oh. to begin with. Oh. 34 and a half inch arms, 10 and 5 eighths hands. He's got a paw. Almost 85-inch wing. 85-inch wing, 21 at two and a quarter with a, that kind of wing to do 21 times, 35-inch vertical jump. He's a beast. Up and down the up and down the line of scrimmage. This will be probably one of the more scheme versatile big men that you can take for the front line. But he's not in a, this draft. he's not an edge like the other four guys in your top 5. No, but he will he will set an edge. He will set an edge. Is he what they call a five technique? He could be a five, but he could also be he could also be a heavy nine. He could be a heavy nine. What's out the there. difference in the two? 
Well, first of all, it's one gap over. Okay. And second of all, I mean, you're not you're not going to leave a tight end on him man to man. I mean, you're not going to. You're going to have to help. If he's out there on the edge with a tight end, very few tight ends are going to be able to handle him. Okay, at, at, at that size. Much like what happened, you know, when the guy that you don't want to mention anymore was here. They, they can't, whose name must not be spoken. Yes. must not be spoken. Voldemort. <laughs> oh, he's – But but this guy – So play, much better than Voldemort. I know. This guy can <laughs> and play a good guy. up and down the line. And the other thing is, and, and I mean this in a really nice way, I love his violence. Well, I mean, do you t- – you don't want a kind defensive lineman. No, I mean I love his I love his violence. You and, want angry. And I just I mean I, Darius Robinson was was one of the reasons that Mizzou had a pretty good year. Oh. And they've got players. We just talked about two corners. They got a little linebacker that'll probably be drafted too. But I just like being a former defensive coordinator, being a being a defensive coach, I'm a, I know what the versatility up front does for you when you're trying to make matchups when you're game planning. And Mike, you know what I like the most? Where he's probably going to fall in this draft, you could get him at 38 at the Tennessee Titans. Wouldn't hate that, would you? No, because, I mean, he, again, in thinking about the overall, and I, and, and I parrot you, Coach Mack, on everything I talk about with roster construction. You love him from a short term and a long term because yep. of, of what he gives you with position versatility. You also love him in your 48 on game day because – he can play, he can do what Danico Autry did, and that's play at the outside linebacker spot, but then also rotate through on spots on the defensive line. You can find him snaps all over the place to where if you need an extra guy at another position, he helps you, he allows you to do that. I mean, those players are so valuable. Well, yeah, they are. I mean, and that's – Corners know. who can play safety – Linebackers who can play all positions, you know, those sorts of offensive linemen who can play up and down. Well, that's why the Titans paid Denique Rowe to get him from the Colts. Right. And that's why the Texans paid him to get – because those guys, if you're if you're sitting in defensive rooms and you're starting to look at – and your your thought about the 48 construction is very, very important. Very important. All of a sudden you got a guy that can slide two places. Sure. Maybe three. Imagine those arms matching hands with the opposing quarterback. With it, stop doing that. <laughs> what? Well, because you're getting me all excited about the edge thing now. Well, I mean, it could. I can he says it's your favorite part. I, and, it's and my again, favorite I'm just part. I love the people hitting the quarter. People hitting the quarterback is just wonderful, unless they're hitting. Well, our, quarter, our quarterback. But we don't want Will yes. Levis to get hit. No, but hitting the that's for another OTP later yeah. in the week. Here, here we go. But <laughs> I mean, again, we don't know what our what the Titans draft board looks like at all. At all. Oh no. But I just I, I just know that for the league, this got to be a pretty. Oh yeah, good piece. Who he looks like? He looks like a Pittsburgh Steeler, which is what scares me. Uh, I mean, how many guys have they had like that over the oh. years? All of them. Yeah, that Hayward kind of. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Cam Hayward's yeah, he's, on the back end there. He's, so. only, he's only been playing like 19 years Yeah, now. something like that. Seat Geek is the official ticketing <laughs> partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans, Titans fans, fans can, can fan. fan. I just wanted to say it. Look at Coach Mack jumping in. I never got to say it. Well, yet. you're doing all those ads now. You're big and famous doing I, I, you, I, you endorse I, a lot of products. <laughs> I just endorse this one. You're Sham Wow with Coach yeah, Mack. He's like <laughs> he's Slap Chop. Miracle yeah. Seal. A miracle Seal. Yeah, flex Seal. <laughs> you're gonna with see Coach Mack out in Lake Amulet with his <laughs> boat patched up there. That's good. All right. Red, who's your favorite? <laughs> who's your favorite edge rusher outside? Of the top five. It's Marshawn Nealon from Western Michigan. I like that one. Man, and was Braden Fisk's teammate before Braden transferred to Florida State. Marshawn Nealon could have probably done the same thing. You're talking about a 6'3", 267-pound guy, long arms, 34 and a quarter, uh, wing nearly 84 inches, ran a 4'7", 540 at 267, uh, 9'11", broad jump, Short shuttle, four one eight three cone uh, under seven two. And, and, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but on pass rushers, a good rule of thumb in some of these testing things is if you've got a three cone seven two or less, 
and if you've got a broad jump of nine nine or more, that's that's a pretty good indicator of well, it's another level. explosion, and that's what so you're that's that position or overall that position. Okay, and, and so this guy hits all the marks on that, but uh, does not quit. That this guy has a motor. Uh, elected team captain in his last year. He was a three-year starter, 149 tackles, 28 for loss, 13 quarterback sacks. He's just – I like his game. He's twitchy and he's long. Uh, he's somebody – he's going to be a probably early night two selection. Coach Mack, who would be your favorite be? Chris Braswell on the other Alabama. side. Alabama, sure. Yeah, Alabama, Chris Braswell at Alabama, 6'3", 251, 33 and a quarter arms. Uh 33 and a half vertical jump, 97 broad jump, 4640, a 15910. He's got he's got some get off. Uh I think this guy's going to be a great complimentary piece uh, for somebody in, in defensively. And a uh, guy that we saw at the senior bowl. Oh, so we've seen him translate that to play football. Yeah. He he did a nice job in Mobile. I I thought so too, Mike. I like him. All right, coach Mack. So who's your sleeper at the edge position? Austin Booker from Kansas. Ah. Six four and a half, two forty, thirty three and seven eighths, nine and a quarter, four seven nine forty, uh, a vertical jump of thirty two and a half. But he's got a he's got nearly an eighty two inch wingspan. Ooh-hoo. This is a big, long dude. Broad jump of ten, very very raw. Now this is a guy that's going to need some development. You're you're taking this guy with the idea that your defensive your your outside linebacker coach is going to have to I mean he's he you've got to be able to mold him but I think he's got enough to him you saw him if you watch his tape he'll make a lot of chase and a lot of spice plays and then all of a sudden you won't see him so he needs to get more uh, continuity to his game but he's got everything that you're looking for if you're going around in those those lower rounds because 64 and a half 240 with that kind of wingspan pretty good I think yeah Rhett, who's your sleeper at the edge? This young man was a two-year starter in this program. He was the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, Mohamed Kamara, Colorado State. He doesn't have the measurables that you'd think about because he's a little over 6'1 and change. But he's better than 5'11", 230 playing defensive oh, line. Coach, okay. Do, do, do not disparage my man Aconquo from the Pit Gorillas. 6'1 and change, 248 Mohamed Kamara is. Uh, longer prospect for that size, though. Almost a 79-inch wingspan, 4.57 in the 40, uh, 10.3 broad jump, three cone, just a little over 7.2 at 7.3 force, 23 reps at 2.25. The guy did nothing to produce when he got in the starting lineup. He he um, is in the top three in program history, 30 and a half quarterback sacks, 45 and a half tackles for loss, 179 tackles overall. He's a uh, he can force fumbles. He just he is uh, going to be a little older rookie. He's twenty four years old, but I don't know. There's something about that guy. Violent player, yeah. violent player. The older rookie thing. It's the thing in this draft. I I know, but the, it's not like you're saying he's forty four. No. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, but people continue. Roy to, Hobbs. Yeah, it's, people continue <laughs> to talk about it. Like it's you know it's people who've. <laughs> Just gotten back from an overseas trip for 25 years or something. 24 is not old. And the NFL is worried about now anyway. You're not sitting there going, well, he might not play 12 years for us. Nobody cares about that. These ages now are like every lineman that ever came out of BYU. Right. Well, right. for yeah. Muhammad Kamara. That's a great point. Listen, if, if he gets drafted where we think, and it'll be a day three, probably round five, round six, somewhere in there. If he gets a five, six-year career – you're you've won. He's yeah. won. Everybody's won. I mean, if you get, I mean, if you get one really good contract out of these players, it's a plus. And then you get them into a second contract. I mean, that's a plus plus. Well, it, it's it, it, if you can get that much out of those with asset allocation, because drafting them down anyway. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, so Coach Mack, if you're wanting to add edge depth in this draft. From what you've seen of the total pool, could you add it on day three? Yes. Okay. I think so. Could you add it in the defensive line on day three? I, that, that, I don't think that's as deep. Okay. Could you add it at linebacker on day three? Yes. Okay. So just to, I know we covered some of that, but just wanted to hit that for the OT people who just joined us. Now, there are some guys on that interior defensive line that will be, I mean, I think the Titans visited a guy that I kind of like. Who's that? 
with McKinley Jackson coming out A and M. Yeah, he's not bad. No, and he'll probably be in that mix. Isn't it interesting how the visits have changed? It feels like in the olden days that <laughs> e- every everybody who visited was going to be your first round pick or your second round pick, and now. You visit some of those guys on the 30 visits to your particular facility, but so many more are mid-round guys and late-round guys, and it's really changed. No, I did. I, I just did a, a, a pretty lengthy interview out of market here asking about asking about the, the importance of 30 visits and what you can glean from 30 visits right. if you're looking from the outside in. and there's all different reasons that you visit different guys. The least reason you visit is try to put up a smoke screen of who you're taking. You don't really care, you know, what, what's going on because everybody's got the same tape. Everybody, it's evaluations in the individual rooms that matter. But some guys you may have spent enough time with at the Senior Bowl now that they've opened it up to, to interviews. Clearly at the, at the Combine, they've changed now. You've got 18 minutes with 45 guys. And also, a, a lot of it depends on how much uh, information the area scout has been able to bring in. And then there are some guys that you are interested in that you want to dig a little deeper to and do, dig a little deeper in, get them to meet people in your building, get them to sit with the coaches. Sure. So there's all different types of reasons. And all you have all different levels of visits. And some of them, Mike, are if you said, you know what, this guy might be – because you only take – one around normally. And so if there may not be in our purview now, but free agency is a real thing in the National Football League. Absolutely. And the more you know about somebody, I mean, you just did a you just did a wonderful thing with a big time player that we just signed and brought back his video from when he was visiting yes. here. Because those things are those things matter to clubs. Calvin Ridley. Yes. Those things matter to clubs. And you keep a you keep a dossier on everybody that's coming into this league. Three days until the NFL draft begins. Tomorrow on the OTP, wide receivers and tight ends. For Coach Mack and Rhett Bryant, I'm Mike Keith. Thank you for joining us on the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go.